Hello, thanks for watching this video. This video will be short, I hope. The goal is to show you Nginx App Protect and how to deploy Nginx App Protect. On Dev Central, we already presented the Nginx App Protect solution. Uh, there is there is a light board where you can see it, and I will put the, the the link in the description of the video. Now my goal is just to show you how to deploy it because there are several ways to deploy Nginx App Protect. The first one that I will present is deploy Nginx App Protect on a standalone host on the Linux, okay, so on the CentOS. Second option in a Docker, in the Docker container, and the last one, the brand new one, has a Kubernetes ingress controller. So let's do it. So first of all, I would like to highlight and just remind you what is Nginx App Protect, okay? So to make it simple, Nginx App Protect is a big IP WAF. It's not another solution. It's a big IP WAF, an ASM or an advanced WAF, but we, we just duplicate the solution in Nginx solution. So it's exactly the same. It's the same daemon, it's the same logs, it's the same engine. So as you can see on the slide here, you can deploy Nginx App Protect in several ways, okay? So we can deploy it in front of your environment application, okay? Like in 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 a in a load balancer or in a in a in a CentOS standalone CentOS or in a in a container. You can deploy it directly with the microservices. So like like a sidecar, uh, you can deploy it in an ingress controller. This is what I'm going to show you with the version 1.3, and soon uh, directly in your Nginx API gateway. So this is NAP, Nginx, Nginx App Protect. It's so easy to deploy, very fast. And let me show you step by step. First of all, let's do it in a CentOS. Okay, so I have a CentOS here and I, I just want to deploy an app. And you're gonna see it's very easy. So first of all, what I need, I need the keys. Okay, so I have keys from, from Nginx because I have a subscription. So I have the keys to connect to the private repo and install the Nginx App Protect. So Nginx App Protect requires an Nginx Plus. But when you install the package, everything is included. So first of all, add the repo. Okay, so I install the repo. Now I have the repo, I have the keys, I should be able to install the package. The, the package is just App Protect. So you install App Protect. And if you have a look, you're gonna see that it's going to install Nginx first, Nginx Plus, then it will install the App Protect module. So as you can see, Nginx Plus version 22 and the App Protect with all the dependencies. So let's wait, it takes a few seconds. It's done. Now if I just check if Nginx is installed with Nginx minus V, I have an Nginx Plus version 22. Perfect. Let's do it very easily. So let's configure my Nginx Plus with App Protect module. So I just go to slash etc Nginx. Nothing new for you if you know Nginx. Okay, so I have an Nginx.conf. You can see that I have several policies. So I just refer to my previous video on declarative WAF. It's exactly the same declaration between an advanced WAF, the big IP, and an Nginx app product. Okay, so if you watch my video on the declarative WAF, it's the same here with Nginx app product. So what I need to do is I need to configure my Nginx.conf in order to proxy my application and protect my application. So I have a banking application in the backend. So first of all, just save the current Nginx com file, okay, never modify the different one, keep a copy somewhere, and create a new one, okay? So, sudo vi nginx.conf, and let's put a new file, let's create a new file. So, I just copy past my, my file for the demo. If you have a look, 
this is my nginx.conf. It's very simple, okay? So I just need a curly bracket at the end. As you can see, I refer to the module app protect. Uh, I include some app protect configuration parameters like my my policy, the default one. I use a default policy. It's a NOAT top 10 policy. Uh, the logs are enabled and the logs are sent to an ELK, an elastic search, okay? ELK, elastic log stack Kibana. Uh, and the format is here. That's it, okay? So I save my file. Now I just need to define a logging profile, like in an advanced WAF, like in a big IP, because I I said to you, okay, it's the same, same, same demand, same module. So now just create a logging profile. If you know advanced WAF RSM, you are going to recognize the configuration, okay? Filtering means logging all the requests, the good and the bad, not only the violations, and the format will be default, the size 5K, okay? Save it. So now have an agents.conf, a log default.json and a policy. We're good. Okay? So what I have to do just restart my Nginx. Here we are. So let's make a test. Simple test. Okay, so this is my application. Okay, so it's running in Kubernetes. I have several microservices and the application is here. So the application is not yet protected. So I can do any any attack on the on the app, it will work. I can do SQL injection, cross site scripting. So let's let's use a incognito window and pass through the Nginx app protect. So now, if I try to do any violation like a cross site scripting with a, like that with a query for script, it's black. And you could recognize you can recognize the, the the blocking page from the big IP WAF, okay, with a support ID. So this is one. I can do many, many more. I can do a SQL injection if I want in a field. This is my my blocking application. So I just navigate in order to populate the the ELK. On the log side, let's connect to the Kibana. So on the Kibana, if I have a look for the last yeah, 15 minutes is fine. I can see my request, good request, bad request. Like I can see some meta character block, a taxi nitro detected, and at the bottom, add the request, okay? What well, this one has been blocked. If I have a look, and if I just full screen, you can recognize the F5 WAF log, okay? So it doesn't matter if it is an advanced WAF or if it is an, an Nginx app project, it's exactly the same. I have exactly the same fields, the same values, the same signature ID. This is very important, okay? So you can see the message, as usual, it's exactly the same. Uh, the request, it's a cross-site scripting on a parameter, okay? I have two violations for two signatures and this is these are the signature IDs. It's the same as an, as an advanced WAF on an ASM. So this is for deployment for, for standalone. Now let's have a look on the Docker. On the Docker, I need to build the image. So the Docker file is available on nginx.conf GitHub. Okay, you can download the, the Docker file from here. So on this machine, I have a doc, some Docker files. You can see I have a standard Docker file, the basic one. I have one with the latest signature package and another one with the thread campaign. So let's, let's build an image with the latest signatures, okay? So by default, the, the package doesn't have the latest signature, okay? It's two different repo. And it's very important to understand why, because the life cycle is not the same. We update the signatures every four to six weeks, but the HapProtect package could be updated every month every two months or every week, it depends. Okay, so now let's build an image uh, with, with this Docker file. So if we have a look on the Docker file with the signature package, what we have, we are installing, a, first of all, the, the AppProtect repo and the AppProtect signature repo. It's two different repo, two different packages. Then I install AppProtect 
and app protect attack signature that's it it's so easy okay so let's build the the image okay so docker build a name then i have to put a, a tag i don't know what is the latest signature package today okay today we are the august 28th i don't know if it is 28 26 25 i don't have not having an idea so i will use latest okay and i forced to use the Dockerfy dash fig. So let's wait, it will take two to three minutes to build this image. Finish. Let's have a look. Docker images. Okay, I have an app protect with the tag latest. So far, so good. Now we have to run it. Okay, so Docker run. The IT, give a name, a port, and of course I need an nginx.confile in my Docker image, okay? Because it's it's pair application, okay? It's not it's not a default one. So I just refer from my on this Ubuntu have my nginx.confile for my banking application, and I just need to specify the tag. It should be running. It's up and running. So good. So it takes. 20 seconds to run. Okay, so the daemon start and run all the daemons takes 20 seconds. So let's check in if it's still running. So far, so good. There is a way to know uh, the version, the version of the signatures. So I just check the log error.log and I can see here I have an attack signature package from 27. So from yesterday, you can see we are 28. So this is uh, the version of the signatures for for today it's running so far so good so if i get back to my to my application i just close this one okay i don't care i will use now the nap in the docker and exactly the same experience same user experience if i try exactly the same kind of attacks with a b for instance uh with a script because this is a so easy to to do it's black. I have another super ID. And if I refresh, another ID, another ID, another ID. Okay, and the log is sent to my ELK. So in the ELK now, I have as well exactly the same logs. And I can consolidate all my applications from an Nginx app protect, from an advanced web, from an ASM, on premises, in a cloud, public cloud, private cloud, in, a, in ELK. This is very, very powerful. So In my dashboard, you can see my new request. Okay, pass or block, but it's here. You can see my I did five times the same attacks. Okay, this is for the Docker. Now the last one, Kubernetes ingress controller. Okay, so now let's go to Kubernetes. Okay, this is my Kubernetes dashboard with my application. As you can see, the application is running. Uh, with four microservices, four pods. In front of these pods, I have an ingress controller. But this ingress controller is just routing the traffic to the right pods, okay? Like, like an LTM, like a big IP LTM, for instance, okay? So if you have a look here, as you can see, there is just a layer seven rule set. If it's slash, please send the traffic to the main service, the main pod. If it is slash five to the backend, slash API to app two, slash app three to app three. Okay, so it's just reading the traffic. Now I want to add on top of this, an app, an Nginx app project. So what I'm gonna do, I will deploy the Nginx app project module in Kubernetes ingress controller. It's so easy. Just follow the guide on nginx.conf, uh, on, sorry, on docs.nginx.com and just define your policy. So on my on my CI CD server, but we don't care. Here, let me show you. Sorry. I have an ingress controller, the one that is deployed right now, and another one for the NAP. So in this YAML file, and I will share this file with you in my GitHub, on this YAML file, there is a policy. And there is as well the, the definition, 
okay? So it's so easy because I just copy paste from the documentation, honestly. No need to, have to, be a, to be a guru on Kubernetes for that. So now what I'm gonna do, I will just deploy this YAML file, okay? So to do so, it's so easy. I will, first of all, delete the current ingress. I could overwrite, okay? It's not a, it's not a big deal. But I will first delete the current ingress, okay? So let's wait a few seconds. Good, the ingress controller is totally deleted. So the, the pod itself, the Nginx Plus has an ingress is deleted and the configuration as well. Now let's deploy the new one. So it's a second file. So I, instead of delete, I use the command apply, okay, with my nap. And this command will start an Nginx Plus. You can see it's very fast. Start an Nginx Plus and configure it as an ingress and push the, the policy. So wait a few seconds, okay, because it requires some time to work. So if I go to my to my Kubernetes, now I can see my ingress controller namespace. This is the pod itself, okay, this is the Nginx Plus pod in front of the cluster publishing Arcadia application, my banking application. To do so, I use node port, but it's not very important. Okay, you can see the node port is here. But in the, in the default namespace, in space where the application resides, I have a new one, a new Arcadia, same name, should have changed it. And now it will be different, have a look. Now you can see, I refer to the app protect module. Same configuration, okay, syslog server, my ELK, the log file, the, the different policies, this one is data guard blocking, this is uh, the policy I want to use. And at the end, the same rules. Now, if I get back to my application and in, instead of going to connecting to, a, to an external resource with a, a CentOS or Docker, I correct and connect directly, connect directly to the, to, the, to the Kubernetes cluster, okay, as a standalone and I should be protected. Here we are, okay? So three different deployments with the same policy files, the same engine.com files, the same configuration, the same logging as well, the same ELK for the logs. This is how to deploy NAP today. Next video will be how to automate that with a CI CD pipeline and Jenkins and Ansible and Terraform. Thanks for watching.